heavily fined and arrested for, wait for it, feeding the homeless. And look at this guy. He's smiling when he does it. Look at this guy's face. What am I going to tell my kids when I go home? Oh boy. Daddy, what did you do today? I issued tickets to people feeding the homeless because my overlords told me to. Okay, we talk a lot about tyranny on this channel. And there's no darker tyranny if you're going to talk about spectrums on the tyranny scale. There's no darker tyranny than to punish somebody who's doing right, who's being compassionate, who's helping their fellow man. I can't imagine, first of all, having a position in government where you're harassing innocent people so that you can meet a quota, so that you can fill the coffers of the state, so that you can economically terrorize your fellow man and receive a paycheck. That's on one side of the scale. There's a deeper, darker part of the scale than that. Imagine people out there feeding the homeless and then a cop comes along with a ticket machine and gives you a ticket for feeding the homeless. And not just any ticket, not a $20 ticket, not a $100 ticket, not a $200 ticket, a $2,000 ticket. Listen to this. Volunteers of an organization called Food Not Bombs being ticketed twice in less than a week. Despite the oh, it's more than that now. This is a four month old video. That it did not stop organizers from showing up and feeding the hungry outside Houston Public Library downtown. Video just taken a few hours ago. Now a federal lawsuit has been filed against the Houston City Ordinance that's being enforced. For years, this corner of McKinney and Smith in downtown Houston in front of the public library has been used by the group Food Not Bombs to feed the hungry. But as of last week, Houston police has begun enforcing a city ordinance, shutting it down and ticketing the volunteers. I mean, look at this. They have a food line with homeless people lined up, hungry homeless people who need a hand. They need help in life. You know, at one time or another, we all need help in life. These cops are going to need help in life. And this is another one of those examples where, hey, I'm just doing my job. I don't write the laws and policies. I just obey them, lending to what we always say. They're conformists, not moralists. They're not doing what is right. They're doing what is wrong. They're doing what is wrong regardless of what is right because they're just doing what they're told. So basically they're saying, hey, don't hold me accountable for the evil I'm about to inflict on you. It's the other guy. It's not me. I'm just here to enforce the evil. Yeah, that's the problem. What if we had people who stood up and said, you know what? I'm not going to be an enforcer of evil. I'm not going to be the one who brings more injustice into this world. And yet they are the ones who go, what? Oh, I can make $70,000 a year by telling people what to do and harassing people and giving $2,000 tickets to people who are feeding the homeless. Where do I sign? See, cops make a choice. They choose to have that profession. Anybody who's going to do evil and then pass that evil along to somebody else as though it absolves them has a problem in their head. It's no measure of good mental health to be considered well-adjusted to a profoundly sick society. We have a profoundly sick society. If we have human beings ticketing with exorbitant tickets, $2,000 tickets. We have a profoundly sick society if we have human beings in clown costumes issuing tickets to people who are doing one of the best things you could possibly do as a human being. That's help out another human being in need. This is an actual arrestable offense. So not only could he lose his uh, you know, money, he could also lose his liberty. Randall Callanan is a civil rights lawyer representing one of those volunteers Benjamin Rendon. Although I'm a lawyer and this is a technical thing, it's also just, uh, it is personal because at the simplest, <laughs> simplest, they're outlawing feeding people. I mean, it's just, it's just like, you, well, do you have to say more? There's like, you don't need an explanation. They're outlawing feeding people who are hungry and will like something to eat. So now they're, they're saying, hey, what you're doing is wrong in our eyes. That's the state. 
The state is saying, hey, that good that you think you're doing, well, we think it's bad. As a matter of fact, we think it's so bad that we're going to find you and we could arrest you and take away your liberties because you decided to help somebody. Using your resources, they're not even using city tax dollar resources. They're using volunteer resources. They didn't force and coerce somebody away from their money so that they could pay for that food so they could give it to homeless. The homeless, that's what the government does. The government, if, the, if there's anything the government does, they can't do it without extracting money, without extracting wealth from somebody else. And they do it by the barrel of a gun. They extort somebody and then they go and help somebody. It's like that saying, the government's good at one thing. They'll break your legs, give you a taxpayer funded crutch and say, see, if it weren't for the government, you wouldn't be able to walk. Not only are they fighting the ticket, a federal lawsuit has now been filed. That you have to fight against this? is upside down world bozo land. Wild challenging the anti-food sharing law, which requires organizations to get permission before feeding groups of five or more people. Callanan believes that's an infringement on freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Everyone it's it's it's, it's a law against love. <laughs> <laughs> They've created a law against love and compassion. They have made love and compassion and goodness an arrestable, finable offense. One knows that in the, in the Christian religion, if you read the Bible, it says they're repetitively feed the poor. I think I found 50, 50 references to feeding the poor and the hungry in the Bible. And based on past cases in other states, Callanan is hopeful they can get this city ordinance deemed unconstitutional. I believe if this uh, went all the way to the Supreme Who cares about the Constitution? It's against common sense and human decency, period. According to the United States, we could win on both the issues, freedom of speech and freedom of religion. He says he expects the city of Houston to file a motion to dismiss before a court date could be set. Reporting in downtown that we even have to win or go to court or have the case tried. I mean, that there would be any judge that would sit there for one second and go, wait, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You guys are feeding the homeless. Yes, your honor. That's right. And you guys are saying if you continue feeding the homeless, we're going to continue giving these $2,000 tickets. Yes, that's right, your honor. What the frick is going on here? You guys need to be put in jail. The guys who are finding the good guys. Here's another one. ...by Houston police since March to a volunteer group trying to feed the homeless in downtown Houston. And the city says that they're violating an ordinance that requires them to get permission to have their meal distribution on the property. Saying feeding the homeless, I mean, this really gets all over me. Saying feeding the homeless is an arrestable offense. In a just world... Making feeding the homeless should be the arrestable offense. The people who should be arrested, the people who should be tried, the people who should be jailed are the people issuing the fines to the people who are issuing the food. There are already a few homeless people out here lined up. They are waiting on a 730 food distribution to begin, and that's what's caused the problem. The line is right outside of the Houston Public Library in downtown. The group tells us that they've chosen this location because it's easy for the people they serve to access. They tell us that the homeless people spend a lot of time in the library. Guess where the cops want and the cops and the mayor and the city want them to give food away in a police parking lot. What homeless person wants to be anywhere near the cops? Plus, they say the library is conveniently located is one thing. The mayor is saying, well, there's there's been violence, reports of violence happening. I don't believe that. A lot of homeless people aren't violent. There's no specific case. There's no specific articulated incident where any homeless person was violent against somebody, somebody who's entering the library. And that's another thing. When they're distributing the food, it's after seven o'clock. By seven o'clock, the library is already closed. So it's not really an issue that, oh, you're getting in the way of children and, and parents who are trying to enter the library. The library is not even open at the time that this volunteer group is distributing the food. The library is what seems like the issue surrounds, according to the city. It's almost like a Cards over here. Citations from the city are expected at this point. Remember in that one video, they said there were two uh, citations. Then I saw a report of 30. Now they're up to 40. 40 times 2,000 is $80,000 in fines. 
Since March 1st, volunteers from Food Not Bombs have gotten a collective 29 tickets from Look at these cops. It's not that I'm volunteering. It almost, it almost looks like this cop gave that ticket, that $2,000 ticket, that $2,000 fine apologetically. But guess what? Apologetic tyranny is still tyranny. Tyranny with a smile is still tyranny. People are like, cops act so unprofessional. Guess what? Professional tyranny is still tyranny. Get the ticket. It's just, I'm here, I'm going to serve. And if that means I get a ticket for serving the, the people who are hungry, then I'm willing to do so. Four nights a week, the volunteer group Food Not Bombs is outside the Houston Public Library on McKinney and downtown, across from City Hall, feeding the homeless. But over the last three months, they've been in a standoff with the city. Back in 2012, under former Mayor Anise Parker, an ordinance was enacted that required groups to get written permission from a property owner to conduct a food service event on the premise. That was not being enforced against Food Not Bombs until three months ago. Cherie Dorr. Look at this cop. Look at his face. How can you go to bed at night? How can you go home to your family and be sitting at the dinner table and your kid asks you, what'd you do today, daddy? Oh, I did good for the world. Oh, really? Be specific. What did you do? I gave $2,000 tickets to people who were helping homeless people. Why did you do that? Because there's an ordinance and I got to follow the rules. I didn't write the rules, Johnny. I just enforced them. What are you teaching your kid? You're teaching him to do what you're told regardless of what is right. As a matter of fact, do what you're told even if you know it's wrong and you know these cops right here know it's wrong. What'd you do? What, what do you do for a living? Oh, I exact evil on Americans. That's what I do. Volunteer says she's not heard of any other groups that are being cited currently. The mayor is saying that he's going to continue uh, this process because he wants to take back the public library. We don't serve until 7:30, and this library is already closed uh, by then. In a statement, so that that issue, that excuse is not an issue at all. They're saying, "Well, we need to close because we don't need. We need to get these people moved out of that location because we, they're disturbing people who are going into the library." Well, if it's true that they don't serve until after the library is closed, then that that reason that they're giving is a lie. The city of Houston says, "Quote: Recently, there has been an increase in the number of threats and violent incidents directed at visitors and employees coming to the Houston Public Library downtown." Parents and families have expressed no longer feeling comfortable visiting the library or holding special events. How can that even be possible if the library is closed when they're serving food? The city asked the group to hold their distributions at a Houston police building on the <laughs> other side of Interstate 45. Nobody wants to go. No, the servers don't want to go to a police building. Guys, the more, the longer you are in contact with a police officer, the more likely you are to be harmed in some way. Nobody wants to go anywhere near where a gaggle of police are located. For him to push that information about the homeless in the library, it's not fair and it adds a stereotype that we just do not like. The consensus among the volunteers is that they're staying put and will continue to take the tickets. They're asking for jury trials on their citations. The first trial is currently set for July. So here we are using a lot of uh, time, resources, money, tax money and stuff like that being used towards this when it's not necessary. Door says HPD Chief Troy Finner did give them a heads up that they would be ticketed before it started, but they haven't heard from city leaders again. Micah Hatfield, ABC. Without government, who would find people who are feeding the poor? Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you haven't already become a channel member, grab a hard hitting conversation starting design from the store. You can put on a shirt, hoodie, mug, cell phone case, whatever you want. If you want to support the channel further, the links are in the description. Remember the price of freedom is eternal vigilance and indifference to this notion is the means by which the people have and will secure their own oppression. Freedom is dangerous. The only thing more dangerous is not having it. I'll see you in the next video.